What's going on, Warriors? It's Coach J back on a Monday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard. We're dropping these videos. We're gonna dive in today four things that are gonna help you improve insulin resistance. Now, this video is gonna be great. We're gonna dive in a little deeper. Maybe you saw an Instagram video that I did. Everything that we do on YouTube, we're just gonna peel the layers back a little bit more to give you what you need to take things to the next level. You wanna stick around. The fourth point I'm gonna dive into is gonna bring this all together for you as well. So make sure you guys stick around so you guys understand how to piece this all together and move yourself forward to improve blood sugars overall decrease how much insulin you take, and take it to the next level. Guys, if it's your first time on the channel, I help type 1 diabetics to find practical solutions to control their blood sugars, lower their A1Cs, but also know how to combine that with fitness to transform their bodies and get real results. I also do things like supplement reviews and vlog style videos as well. So hey, if you just want to follow the channel, join the family, show some love, Appreciate y'all. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that bell notification. Hit that like button. Just helps me get out there and just put this stuff and take it to the next level, man. I really appreciate you guys. I'm going to shut up. I'll see you guys in this one. First thing we have to look at is what is insulin resistance in the first place? So insulin resistance is when your cells are not responding as well as they used to to the hormone insulin whose job it is to help us to shuttle glucose into our cell. As a result, we end up needing more and more insulin over time. Now more and more insulin over time is not necessarily a good thing because it can lead to other issues such as hyperinsulinemia which can lead to other metabolic syndrome type issues things like cardiovascular disease, dyslipidemia, so you have different levels of cholesterol, triglycerides in the body, which then exasperate and make the situation even worse because now you need more insulin to get through the, the fat as well, so it becomes this never-ending cycle. And maybe you notice fat stored around your gut more often. That's another sign that you're in a state of slight hyperinsulinemia. Now, there's obviously a range to hyperinsulinemia as well, so don't panic. But these are solutions that we can start to add in here so we can understand what we need to do better to decrease insulin when it's time. This is just finding solutions to be less resistant. Now, this might come in handy for you as well. Maybe you're someone who's going through a cycle. Maybe you're in that luteal phase of your cycle where progesterone is a little bit higher, estrogen tends to be a little bit lower, and as a result, you become more insulin resistant. So incorporating some of these strategies in, especially during these times, are things that can help you to take it to the next level to give yourself some more sensitivity and get through that part of your cycle. And maybe you're just somebody overall who just wants to improve sensitivity. Maybe you're in a cut and a deficit where it's extremely important for you to focus on decreasing your basal over time during a deficit phase because decreasing the basal, whether it's on an insulin pump, and I've talked about this before, decreasing your basal to bolus ratio under about a 37% is a sweet spot, which can really help you to lose more weight, burn more body fat, which then in turn helps your body to be less resistant to insulin as well. So we're seeing how cyclical this becomes. First thing I want to go over is exercise and resistance. So exercise we know can help to increase certain pathways and certain enzymes that are responsible for improving sensitivity, helping you to burn more body fat, triggering certain things inside the cell like GLUT4 for example which inside your body's cell gets triggered which can move to the inside surface of the cell which essentially is like the person that walks to a door opens it up to allow glucose in that's basically GLUT4 inside your cells and so when you're training and working out you you allow this process to run a lot smoother another thing as well when you're when you're exercising is you actually don't need insulin to bring glucose into your cells more muscle contractions help your body to actually absorb that glucose without the need of insulin. That's something to remember when you are working out. Maybe you're someone who's going into blood sugar lows, but you know that exercising, it can speed this process up because you don't need any insulin to get the glucose into the cell. So you might be more willing to try suspending your insulin pump during the time that you're working out, for example, or changing your activity mode setting to have your target higher or change the percentage of your basal. Or if you're somebody who notices this, maybe you need a little bit of juice before your workout to help to avoid that blood sugar low. Which type of exercise and what do you actually do to be able to increase your body to make things more sensitive. And like everything, guys, I'm gonna drop the studies in the description to back what I'm saying, just so you guys know I'm not talking out of my ass. Now, when we break these down into aerobic versus anaerobic training, we can dive a little deeper. So we think about anaerobic, we think about aerobic training, meaning with oxygen. So your body has, has enough oxygen capacity to be able to break down glucose, fatty acids. Now, the one thing about aerobic training is the more intense that aerobic training is, 
the more likely you are to improve that sensitivity at a lower duration, right? So for example, a lot of studies are showing us that between about 50 to 60% of your max heart rate is a sweet spot for where you wanna to go to. To find your max heart rate, you take 220 minus your age. Then you multiply that by the percentage that you wanna work at. So if you, let's say somebody, for example, is 25 years old, 220 minus 25 is gonna give us 195. And so then you're gonna multiply that by 60% to find out how much your heart rate should be to work out that 60% range or 50 to 60%. Now, a lot of studies are saying all you need is three times a week. And if you do that for 50 minutes, that'll help to improve insulin sensitivity over time. Now, what's important to remember with this, and this is all nutshell based on a lot of studies. Now, what's important to remember with this though, is even if you don't get 50 minutes in, you're somebody who gets maybe 20 minutes in, try to see if you can maybe increase that intensity up to maybe 70% right? And that 20 minutes. And even if you do hit 60%, you're still doing something more than somebody who is not doing anything at all to improve that sensitivity. So keep that in mind. Now, when we compare this to resistance training, what you're going to find with resistance style training is that you're going to have more longer lasting benefits with performing resistance training than you would if you're just doing the aerobic style training. If you're doing aerobic style training, you're going to notice more acute changes in insulin sensitivity or shorter changes in insulin sensitivity versus if you can combine that now with resistance style training, over time, you're going to find more longer benefits and more of a sustained decrease in insulin sensitivity. Now, reason being, when your body has more muscle on board, it has a better capacity to be able to store glucose. And when you're building more muscle, you also ramp your body's metabolism up because it takes more energy to sustain muscle. So over time, that can help with better sensitivity as well. Also, when you're resistance training, you're gonna increase more things like growth hormone, which can also help your body in terms of muscle preservation as well, which then helps with sensitivity over time. And so we see that there's this domino impact as well. Now, the more muscle you have, the more fat you can burn as well at rest. And so if the more muscle you have, the more fat you're burning and the more fat you have on your body makes you more insulin resistant. Now you see how everything can kind of come together and you can prove that resistance by also making sure you're focused on that resistance style training. Now let's say again, you want to do the aerobic style training, which can help with more acute types of sensitivity to improve it from that perspective. Now you combine it with that resistance element and you've got a good strategy there to take it to the next level. I recommend if you want that acute aerobic style training to focus on it at the beginning of the day, shut up. Focus on it at the beginning of the day. If you can focus on it at the beginning of the day, then this can allow you to have that acute style of insulin sensitivity throughout the day. Also keep in mind, if you're a type one diabetic and you're performing these exercises, the more intense you are, though with your aerobic training, the more adre adrenaline you're likely gonna release. The more adrenaline that you release, the more you're likely going to trigger a response of glucose because adrenaline triggers the release of glucose in your body. And so if you opt for more lower duration cardio, again, you might need to increase the duration to get the same benefits as if you did a higher intense type training at a shorter duration because of the impact that it has hormonally on your body to help you with improving sensitivity. But Having said that, you also have to be aware that that increase in hormonal output and things like adrenaline also mean that you should be aware that you might spike your blood sugar because of that adrenaline. So getting ahead of that and bolusing beforehand when you understand your correction factor, and I have a lot of videos on that describing in my, on my channel, describing how to get ahead of blood sugar spikes while you're training and working out. So that's one option that you can use to help to avoid spikes if that's something that you're noticing. Now, the second thing we can do to help us to improve insulin resistance is to focus on the heating and cooling of starches. Now, this isn't just to go with rice, because maybe you've heard of rice. You can just with any starch, think about oats, think about rice, think about pastas. I've had a lot of clients where we've tried this with, where it's worked really successfully. So it's something for you to try as well. What you want to focus on again is heating your food up, cooling it for at least 24 hours, and then going and eating it after. In doing this, it increases what's called resistant starch in the foods that you're eating, which help to slow the digestion down of glucose in your body and that release into your blood, which can help to better control your glucose levels, almost acting like fiber. In science, this is called retrograde. We're changing the dynamic of the starches to become more resistant, which then help your body to control your blood sugars better. There's actually not a lot of studies out there that I could find that are comparing whether you cool something for 24 hours or you cool it for 48 or even 72 hours to see what that does for you. So you can even 
be in, be a researcher for your own body. See what happens if you cool it for 48 hours instead of 24 or 72 and eat it after and see if it helps to control things even better for you as well. So these are ways you can manipulate what you do. Now remember when you do test stuff, keep it as the same as possible. And I say this a lot, isolate what it is you're trying to look at. If you've been testing one cup of rice across these different days and you wanna see what happens, stick with one cup of rice. If you're trying to test 24 versus 48 hours versus 72 hours, then every study, write down what you notice and keep it the same. If it's one cup of rice, keep it one cup of rice. If you added chicken breast to one, then add chicken breast to all of them. Don't change it. That's part of a study is isolate what you're looking at by keeping as many variables the same as possible so you can really see what's happening. The third thing that you guys are going to want to focus on, fiber. Now, there's two types of fiber. We've got soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. Insoluble fiber passes largely through the digestive tract, largely intact. So it adds bulk to stool, for example. So if someone's having digestive issues or having trouble using the washroom, you want to go for more insoluble fiber. Now, if you use soluble fiber, soluble fiber can interact with water in your body and increase what's called the viscosity in your gut, which helps to slow the gastric emptying that happens, which can also help you to regulate blood sugar because it's slowing down how fast that glucose gets released. So the two best ones that I've noted is, especially when I work with my clients, is one beta glucan and one psyllium husk. Psyllium husk is gonna come from one specific plant called the Plantago ovata, and it can work really well as a soluble fiber. But the one that I prefer, that I feel like works best, and just out of the clients that I've had use it is beta glucan. Beta glucan is going to come more from the cell walls of oats, things like oats, barleys, and even some mushrooms as well, which act to create, again, that viscosity in the gut really well, which can help to slow down the digestion and slow that release of glucose into your bloodstream, helping you to better control your blood sugar overall. Now, the fourth thing that's extremely important that to focus on is your ratios because it does not matter what I tell you here about these three solutions that can help improve resistance in your body. If you're not focused on dialing into your ratios and you're mixing too many things and you're not being that researcher, that experimenter that's isolating variables to determine where your blood sugar should be, then you're always going to be at a guess because you'll always be adding in different components that you didn't realize are impacting the results. You have to keep isolate things and keep them as simple as possible to better determine where your ratios should be because you could be more insulin sensitive but your ratios could be off, you're still gonna notice blood sugar is going all over the place. When you think about the big picture of things like cardio that you're doing, also remember, what are you actually doing? Are you just leisurely walking and not thinking about your target ratio, your target heart rate? Is it just whatever happens, happens? Or are you going in with a game plan and testing different heart rate zones for yourself to find out what works? Everything is testing, understanding the direction can help you and then knowing what level of that direction is going to be best suited for you. And to do that, you have to test different variables within that to see what works best. And in doing that, you will find a solution and you will find a strategy to help to take you to the next level.